Hey guys! So in this video, I am going to show you 10 ways to use the Hobonichi Weekly Supplement, this little green book right here. Unlike the Hobonichi Cousin, the A6 planners do not have a weekly spread. So you have to buy this weekly supplement here if you want the A6 weekly spread. The supplement is tiny. Uh, it measures 5.5 inches long and 3.75 inches wide, or in the metric system, 14 cm long and 9.5 cm wide. It's smaller than an actual A6 because it was designed to fit in the back pocket of uh, the A6 covers. The green dye can rub off on other surfaces, so you got to watch out for that if you're going to put this into the back pocket of your A6 covers. So this is a no frills planner. You have the uh, year's calendar on the first page, uh, followed by 52 weekly spreads, and then right at the end, you have five pages of grid paper. Let's look more closely at one of the weekly spreads. The two-page spread is divided into eight columns, uh, one for the notes and seven columns for each day of the week. The supplement has a Monday start, so there is no option for a Sunday start. For the top row, you have the date and the day in Japanese. Uh, and this is followed by a row without the grid. Uh, and then you have the gridded uh, sections. You have three rows with a box on the left, uh, a 24-hour timeline from 6 a.m. to 5 a.m. here. Then right at the bottom, you have some empty space. And in the left corner, you have the calendar for the month and the week circle. Because of its tiny size, some people have told me that it's difficult to use this planner. So I came up with 10 ways you can use the weekly supplement. I've included the timestamps in the comment section below. So if you want to skip ahead, uh, please use these timestamps. All right, so let's get started. The first way to use uh, this supplement is as a weekly planner. Here I segment the spread into different rows, each representing different domains of my life. At the beginning of each week, I plan the tasks for each domain. So for example, I lecture on Monday, prepare the slides on Tuesday and Wednesday, grade from Thursday to Saturday, uh, and then prepare my lecture on Sunday. I also plan to collect uh, data from Monday through Wednesday, work on my coding rubric on Thursday, and so on. Planning my week this way is useful for two reasons. First, it ensures that I carve out time for domains outside of my work, such as relationships and um, this self-care. Secondly, it allows me to develop a more realistic plan for the day uh, since I can see at a glance what my commitments are for each day. I didn't do it here, but you can if you wanted to, uh, to write down the estimated and actual amount of time for each task. At the bottom, I have my three focus of the week. That is, if I accomplish nothing else that week but these three, I feel pretty satisfied with myself. And then right here, uh, I write a motivational quote to encourage myself. Now you could use the supplement as an expense tracker. I divided the spread into rows and wrote down my expense categories such as food, transport, etc. Every day, I record my expenses in each category uh, and at the end of the week, I tally my expenses both by category and by day. Uh, this is how I can see where my money is going. I've also included a spending log or journal at the bottom of the spread. And this is where I write uh, things like um, one thing that I spent on that made me very happy or one thing that I spent on that made me not so happy. This way I can 
identify and cut back on things that don't make me so happy and then spend more on those that do. A third way uh, I would use the supplement is for daily reflection. Once again, I divide the spread into rows and each day I write down one good thing that happened to me that day, one challenge I faced, and then one thing that I resolved to change about myself the next day. At the bottom, I have a habit tracker. Uh, I put dots on days that I want to do the habit. If I do the habit, then I put a cross uh, and if I don't, I just leave it. Uh, if you have a lot of habits, then you can have a habit tracker here and also a habit tracker here. Uh, or you could uh, write down a reminder at the bottom of the page like what I have done here. I like to use the weekly spread uh, sometimes as an overview of my master task list. Each column represents uh, different projects in my life uh, and I write down all the deliverables I can see uh, for I can foresee for the project. Then on this side, I isolate certain deliverables that I want to work on that week and then break them into tiny tasks. Uh, breaking a huge task into tiny tasks really helps me overcome my procrastination. So I highly recommend this if you're suffering from procrastination like me. At the bottom, I plan what I want to do for the week. So I draw a box for each day I want to work for the task on the task. And if I work on the task, I shade the box. Otherwise, I leave it empty. So for example, I wanted to grade on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but really only managed to grade on Saturday and Sunday. This is a miniature version of my A5 weekly spread. At the top, I write the priorities uh, for each day and then I write the schedule as well as the task list. Uh, on the left column, I write uh, what I'm waiting on as well as things that are upcoming. The waiting on list helps me to remember to follow up with people uh, when they owe me stuff. Uh, and the upcoming en list ensures that uh, the deadlines don't sneak up on me. You could also use the supplement uh, as a family planner. On this side, I've written the groceries a uh, grocery list as well as uh, household things that I have to attend to for the week, such as uh, paying utility bills and so on. Um, at the top, I write my meal plans for the day, the family schedule, uh, as well as a list of chores for each family member. I also include some recipes that I would like to try that week right here. This outfit planner uh, would be useful for people who don't like repeating their outfits. Each row represents one item such as shoes, bags, uh, accessories, and so on. And then you simply fill in every day uh, your outfit for that day. One problem I've had with this spread is that unless the item is really unique, I have to be specific with the description of the item here. Uh, else, like for example, I wrote here, if I write here black shirt, I might wonder which black shirt I'm referring to. Now, it's no secret that I procrastinate a lot. Uh, this is my attempt at gamifying my tasks to reduce procrastination. At the beginning of each day, I write down the tasks that I must absolutely work on. Then I score myself at the end of the day. If I work on all the tasks, then I give myself one point for each task. But if I fail to work on even one task, I get zero points for that day. At the end of the week, I tally all my points and then I uh, look at my tiered reward system and then I reward myself accordingly. Now, a couple of things to note here if you want to implement this system. First, you need a balance of easy and difficult tasks. If you only put in difficult tasks on the list, you'll be quite demotivated. If you put in only easy tasks on the list, then you are gaming the system. So uh, you need to have a balance of tasks. 
Second, you might want to consider enlisting the help of a family member or a friend to give you the reward. Now, I find that I tend to give myself the reward whether or not I actually reach the requisite number of points. Uh, so that's something to watch out for if you want to implement this in your life as well. Now, when I was bullet journaling in my Rodia, this was my favorite spread. It's simple to draw and it captures everything that I need. So the top are appointments, uh, followed by the task list uh, and then the food log. I use this space to write down my exercise regimen, but uh, obviously you can use it to write other notes as well. Um, at this point, um, if you only have one habit, you could use the calendar to track that one habit. Uh, so here I use it as a exercise tracker for each day that I exercise, I put a cross on the calendar. Finally, you could use the supplement as a distraction notebook. When I'm working, I find myself uh, often thinking random thoughts like, oh, I need to cut my nails or, oh, I want to check the bond rate and things like that. So instead of distracting myself by taking action immediately, uh, I collect all my thoughts on uh, in my distraction notebook. Then at the end of the day, or at the end of the work session, I process my list of distractions uh, and then I basically have um, a focus uh, when I am focusing on my work tasks. I sometimes write uh, encouraging notes to myself like just start or shitty first draft is okay uh, and these uh, notes motivate me as well. Right. Uh, so those are the 10 ways that you can use the weekly supplement. I hope that these ideas help you see the supplement in a new light. Uh, if you want to use these layouts but you don't have the supplement, you can reproduce these in a simple A4 dot grid journal or, well, uh, sorry, A6 dot grid journal, not A4 dot grid journal. Now, if you have found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll be uploading videos uh, rather sporadically from now on, so please hit the bell icon if you want YouTube to notify you when I post. As always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.